I had always wanted to visit the tropical north coast of Queensland. So one day I went there for a holiday. I had a very enjoyable time, cruising along the barrier reef, fishing, sailing, and water skiing on the lakes of the Atherton Tablelands. But after you have been there for a while, you realize it isn't just a place for holidays. It stands to reason that Cairns, a city of over 16,000 people, can't live on visitors alone. So I started to look around to find out what makes the place tick. At first sight, Cairns seems much like any other Australian township. The same wide streets, the usual awnings over the pavement, the gutters are a bit wider. They have to be to take care of a 90-inch rainfall. Shirt sleeves and light clothing are the order of the day all the year round. And umbrellas are just as handy when the sun is shining as when there's rain. Phew, that tropical sun. It's not until I went out to the residential areas that I realized the difference it makes to life in the north. Verandas are heavily shaded while the houses stand clear from the ground on stilts. And every garden is filled with tropical flowers and fruits. I found out one unexpected thing about Cairns. Settlement didn't come from the sea. In the 1870s, cattlemen and gold prospectors were pushing northwards overland. Rich strikes of gold in the neighboring gold fields brought in thousands of diggers. Till then, the marshes and mangrove swamps on the coast had deterred settlement. But overland supply from ports a thousand miles away became impossible. So they came down over the coastal ranges in their bullock carts, you can still see the tracks today, to find suitable ports on the nearby coast. Further to the north, Port Douglas and Cooktown were settled in this way a few years before Cairns. Cooktown has an earlier link with Australian history. Here, Captain Cook beached the Endeavour after she was holed off Cape Tribulation. There are still people who remember Cooktown as a thriving port with some 30,000 inhabitants. When I was there, there were barely 400. It wasn't hard to discover why. When the gold went, the people went. The bush came back to the farms, the pubs ran dry. Eventually, Cooktown needed only a weekly launch from the south while a single rail motor supplied the interior. The same thing might have happened at Cairns. But Cairns became a railway centre. Here, the lines from the interior come down to the coast, while the Sunshine Express route links it directly to Brisbane and the south. Inland, the Barren Gorge provides the most suitable approach to link the network of lines over the rich tableland with the coast. I found that Cairns depends on its hinterland for its prosperity. The rich coastal plains are dotted with sugar farms, the source of one of Queensland's most important exports. deal of mining is carried on. Coal, tin, wolfram, most metals, and still a fair bit of gold. Another industry that has lost none of its importance since the early days is timber getting.
westwards, towards the Gulf, is the cattle country, land of the large stations. The inland tablelands, once covered with dense tropical rainforests, form one of the richest agricultural areas in Australia. silos dot the countryside and so much is produced that a lot of it is exported overseas. One thing I had never realized was how important tobacco is beginning to be in North Queensland. It's been grown in a small way around Mariba and Dimbula for many years. But since 1946, proper organisation, scientific methods and restrictions on dollar purchases have all combined to make it thrive. Working through their own cooperative, the growers have built their own selling floor and factory at Mariba. Already the factory is producing cigarette and pipe tobacco mixtures. The manufacture of cigarettes is planned to begin in the near future. If the industry keeps growing at its present rate, North Queensland may soon supply a major part of Australia's requirements. to me quite obvious that things in the north aren't standing still. And I found responsible people fully alive to coming needs. The Cairns Harbour Board has its plans and is already improving harbour facilities. Inland, New power and irrigation schemes are well underway. Road construction is being pushed ahead. I was very impressed with what I saw in the north. They seem to have everything up there. A fertile land, mineral wealth, untapped water and power, the possibilities for comfortable living. The only thing they're really short of is people. But new people are moving in all the time. They can make a good life for themselves in the north. <laughs> 